hey, we are here today to flatten the curve. <laughs> Flat, yeah, we're gonna do this instead of this. So you're at Litvok Leadership Live, and I am here with my good friend, Eric Bam, Eric Burns. But everyone knows him as Eric Bam, so, Bam, so why even say his last name? Eric, what's going on? I am just happy to be here with you, my friend. You are, you and I are the perfect example of you can get on social media and just nah, rail on rail and rail on people about their political opinions and this and that and yeah. just delete people. But you and I are a good example of just like, hey, well, why did you think that? Well, I think that because of this. And you have a real conversation and we're still bros. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we found out that we agree about more than we disagree about. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's one of the downfalls I think of social media. We, I, you've heard this under we have the greatest communication device in the history of the world in front of us, and and we use it to bash the crap out of each other on Facebook. Pretty stupid. Oh, I I posted something the other day in response to someone. Um, frozen frozen hand, Tim Lord. Um, and I was saying something complimentary, encouraging them. We're getting feedback on your side. I don't know why. And do you hear that? No, I don't know. That? Okay. So anyways, and then all of a sudden, people start like bashing me, saying, oh, you need to support this person, da, 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 da. I'm like, read what I wrote. Unbelievable. Right. Oh, yeah, I love the new blue background, too. It, it was an amazing weekend painting the wall. So, all right, so here we are. I asked Eric on because today is the day, not date, but the day, the one year anniversary to the day when then President Trump got on TV, the live stream, whatever you want to call it, and asked everyone to stay home for two weeks to flatten the curve. Yep. And it made me think, who would be a good person to have on that day to talk about what was and then looking ahead, and I could think of no one else other than Eric Bam because we met because of COVID. So, hey, I want to open up with a Bible verse that, that is in my head, but I'm going to read it. It's uh, Philippians 3.13, and it's going to where we launch this conversation. Uh, brothers, I count myself to have not apprehended but one thing. Forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead. Tell me, doesn't that sound like uh, moving out of 2020? Yeah, I, I you know, a, a, so many just thoughts running through my head. I think I remember specifically when uh, President Trump spoke and it was ironically ironic because all in the same exact hour, three things happened. You had President Trump talking. You had the Oklahoma City Thunder game, which two hours for me was canceled. And, and you had America's favorite uncle, um, uh, what's his name? The actor that, that came down with COVID him is Tom Hanks had COVID. Mm -hmm. I think Tom Hanks having COVID probably really shook people more than anything else that happened. <laughs> I mean, you, you laugh. I'm, I'm serious. I, I think it was social media blew up with it. You know, yeah. it, I, I think, um, I don't know. It, it, it was so interesting. And you look back on it now and I said to somebody earlier, and I think I said maybe on a call we were on earlier and I said to my wife, it's like, you know, it was 365 days ago, but it feels like it was 3000 days ago. It, this oh. is the longest year, but yet, you know, for you and I, I think pretty rewarding. And, you know, you, you see the people that, that grew through the pandemic and took advantage of the time at home and went to the a home gym or, a peloton you know like tim lord just got a peloton poor guy can't do 10 minutes on it but but he's got a peloton now and but you look at the people that took advantage of the opportunity to be home and not just you know binge watch netflix 24 7 and and um, i think i think one of the one of the cool side effects of i think a lot of things happen but i think some from a business standpoint i think covid pushed business ahead about 10 years from the standpoint of the americans now working from home uh, from the standpoint of us not traveling and having to figure out new ways to reach customers. Um, right. I, I think it changed, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're FaceTiming with my mom, with the kids. And, you know, I, th I think, I think it pushed everyone into, into a new area of, of technology. And I think it opened a lot of people's hearts too, to what's important. And the fact they can't just 
hop in the car and drive, you know, 45 minutes, so that, you know, because they don't want to affect grandma or grandpa or what. I think, I think, I think, I think life is the way you look at it. And I think, I think COVID, I think we're going to look back 10 years from now and there's going to be a lot of silver linings. I mean, God, I, I, I'm glad I, I didn't die or I didn't get sick and I haven't had COVID knock on wood, but, uh, but I, you know, I, I think we'll look back on it with some, um, I think we're going to look back on it in a lot of ways politically. We're going to look back on it in a lot of ways from a business standpoint. It's going to have changed. I think I think it's going to make us appreciate people different. So speaking of appreciating people different, let's talk about family. Yep. I mean, and, and and I'll start. I was one of those guys that traveled. Um, and some people are like, oh, that's nothing. And other people are going to be like, oh, my God, that's so many days. I traveled 100 nights a year. Yeah, which is you know more than your average bear, and and people would would ask me and my wife all the time, how do you guys do that? And we're like, well, we've done it for years, and we're we're used to it. Our relationship is built around it, and then all of a sudden, I was home for seven months. Yeah, and it was a total switch, and it changed the dynamic of our marriage, of our family, because our daughter came home for spring break. Yeah. And never left. So all yeah. of a sudden our adult daughter is, is here and we're used to being home just the, the, the two of us. And shortly thereafter, my mother-in-law moved in for a, a, about four or five months also. Yeah, I remember so that. It really changed. I think it brought people closer together and allowed them to rediscover one another. Yeah, I, I think there's no doubt. I think there's no doubt. So yeah, I remember your mom living there. That's that's funny because that seems like a thousand years ago. I feel like I've known you for a thousand years, and yet that was three quarters of a year ago. Yeah, yeah. You know? So so for everyone's knowledge, Eric and I both signed up for the same sales course, um, and and we could see each other's posts in the daily uh, sales thing going on. And then one one yep. day, Eric just called me, and I was like, "Oh, Eric Bam is calling me." <laughs> I knew who he was. He knew who I was, and, and that was how this fr fr friendship started. So, yeah. so what was life like in the, in the Bam household with you being home a whole lot more? Because didn't you travel your fair share too? Yeah, yeah, I traveled quite a bit too, and uh, you know the changes for us. You know, obviously, were kids being home from school, which you you didn't have kids in in elementary school, and and right. kids all of a sudden being home and and trying to figure out, you know. Uh, online stuff and remote learning and what all that stuff looks like. And, and, uh, and then my wife about a month in, uh, she's now working from home. And, you know, I, I think, you know, from the industry I'm in and the pizza industry, you know, the stats, the stats were a year ago, 29% of Americans were working from home. And now that number continues to climb. It's now 44 and a half percent. And so you've got restaurant operators wondering why their lunch business isn't coming back and it's people aren't out, you know, yeah. 15% more Americans are working from home. And so they're not going out to eat lunch at your restaurant. So you've got to figure out a different way to get to them. And uh, so, so it's different at our house. Um, you know, it was, um, we're still adjusting to it. I think, you know, yeah. in our way a little bit. And uh, you know, we've got in our industry, pizza expo was supposed to be in June. It got moved again today to August and, and, you know, there's still a lot of, in our world, a lot of the, on the vendor side, you, know, you can open things up all you want, but on the vet, in the vendor community, you still have companies that are still on, on travel bans and they're not letting people fly. And so I wonder how that's going to affect trade shows and what that looks like. And, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's, like I said, it's been an interesting year and, and, uh, you know, just from the standpoint of my family, I, you know, I think my, my, I had my brother, my sister, their spouses both had COVID, both, you know, are okay. And, and, uh, but luckily that's about it. You know, I think on my wife's side, we had a little bit of COVID, but nothing too bad. And so it, it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting year. It's, it's been super interesting. So, you know, customers have taken a, a hit too. Um, I've been in the janitorial industry. Um, and, you know, when you look at you know, and our, our business, everyone's like, oh, your business must be like a rocket ship. Well, on the disinfection side, yeah, we, we've been busy. But when people aren't in buildings, yeah. they, there's they, nothing to disinfect. There is nothing to clean. So yeah. the facility managers cut things back. So, you know, it's been kind of like this. It yeah. hasn't been this. 
been kind of like this, but, and I know restaurant tours, some of them have done tremendous because they've yeah. figured out how to make carry out happen. And others yeah. have been, just been hurting in, in a big way. Now you're big in, in restaurants in the pizza portion, but I know, you know, a lot about, about the industry. Where do you see it going? Um, I kind of, I mean, just to back up a little bit, I mean, the pizza industry did really well because they were almost what you might call COVID ready. You know, we were all familiar with putting the pizza in a box and swinging through a drive through and picking it up. Um, I, I think I think where the restaurant industry is going to go is I think some some restaurants, whether it's a whether it's a large chain with a five, six thousand square foot building or it's a small independent pizzeria with you know, a thousand square feet. I think what's going to happen is I think some of those bigger buildings, they're going to realize we can, we can survive with a lot less than this. And, and I think of a, a Chili's as an example in an airport and you look at that kind of model. And I think you'll see a lot more of that come from some of the larger chains where, and I, you, you picture that Chili's in your head where they have a bar and they have a bunch of tables stacked all together, nice and tight. And they're running a, a about 75% of their menu through one of those. And I can, I can see, you know, larger restaurants going to smaller footprints, a little bit tighter menu, but on the back side of that bar, they've got a drive through window and they've, or they've got, you know, a curbside pickup window and they're going to adapt. And, and I think that's going to happen. I really think, you know, there's all this chatter and talk about things are going to open up and everyone is going to get their summer back. And I kind of feel like what's going to happen is I, I think that's going to happen. I think, I think a lot of uh, states are, you know, Oklahoma where I live is now back to just, you know, wide open. Texas is wide open. Florida has been wide open. I think you're going to see a lot of consumers get out because they've got, you know, COVID cabin fever. I think yeah. consumers are going to get out and they're going to get out and eat. And they're maybe going to go to movies and they're going to go to sporting events and, and they're going to get back after it. But then I think I, this is my personal opinion. I think once we get into fall, and it start, it starts getting dark and cold out, I think we will revert right back to what we've had, which is being catered to and having stuff delivered to our house. And, you know, the days of, you know, at our house, I mean, we don't go into Walmart hardly anymore, even though we can, everything's just boop, 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 pick it up in, in the line, in the line and, and off we go. And I think, um, I think consumers are now used to that. And I think that trend is going to continue. I think, you know, I'm not a big fan of third party delivery apps like Uber Eats and DoorDash because they, uh, take advantage of restaurant operators, but I think those are going to continue to do really well. And and I think restaurant operators, if they're if they're smart, and most of them are, they're going to figure out how to to do it themselves. And and they've got to figure out how to get where their customers are. And and I think that's probably what's going to happen. I think I think early fall, I think you're going to see a lot of people just summer's over, and they're going to revert right back and and go back into hibernation for a winter. Just my thought. So so our, our favorite sushi restaurant in in the southern in indiana area which shall we remain nameless because i'm going to out them on something i really don't like that they're doing yes. when 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 covid was just in you know high tail they on the carry out they added 18 percent to every single bill as a tip <clears throat> so they could you know take care of their servers but now that people can go back in in the restaurant and in Indiana, I believe is at either 75 or 90 percent. They're yeah. still only feeding in this restaurant at 50 percent and still adding 18 percent to carry out bills. I just don't think that's right. Am I wrong? Well, it's right because that's what the owner feels is right. It's 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 wildly wrong from a consumer standpoint. It, it's wildly wrong from a from a PR standpoint. If if because here here's the here's this I love this. this is a great conversation because there's a local pizzeria that I like. And if you go pick up a pizza, there's a 50 cent takeout fee per pizza. Now, a year ago, were they charging a 50 cent takeout fee? No, no. So if if you as an operator feel like you have to cover the cost of packaging or you know whatever that is, raise your price because at least just make it part of the cost and don't hide. Don't hide it. I say hide it. Just put it, make it part of your cost because when you add that auto gratuity of 18% or that auto, that auto 50 cents, you look like you just, it just looks bad. It's just not a good look. And I, I will say regarding that, you know, operators, restaurant operators need to do a better job of packaging. 
Um, you know, there's a local Mexican restaurant by our house that they're still putting stuff in those nine by nine white foam containers. And it's just a bad look. I want to get it home and I want the packaging to look great. I want the product to be hot. I don't want a foam container. That's the flimsiest thing on the planet that I'm paying for. You know, they, they've got to step up their game, but I, as a consumer will pay more for that. And a lot of consumers. And, and where is uh, Georgia Pacific and West Rock on this? You would think that they would be having, you know, they, they've got to be having talks about, okay, what do we do about this? You heard well, it here. West, West Rock and Georgia Pacific have had massive years. So, so they, they probably don't care. They're, you know, let you do whatever you want because I, you know, that's, but that's, that's one of the things about business. Some, some, some business people like you or me are very good at, at trying to, um, be a consultant and try and help them. And some are just like, mm, you do whatever you want. Ethel is in the house. Ethel, what's up? That's my mom. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for the line. I'm not going to say it. I'm, you, you say it every time she shows I'm up. I'm not going to say that I came out of my mom's vagina and it was the greatest day of her life. I'm not going to say that. But that was, that was, you know, last month. So, so you know, you're welcome. There we go. And this is what Probably the greatest what day of her life and the greatest day of mine. This is what you get Mama Bam for showing up. Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> we all know that's what your son says every single time. All right. So, Eric, we got to do some shameless promotion. So what kind of year did Perfect Crust Pizza Liners and the IncredibleBags.com have during all this? We had a good year. Um, obviously, you know, Pizza Takeout did great. And so Perfect Crust did great. And Incredible Bags did great. Um, but you're awful. Whatever. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we were growing anyway. And so COVID helped us. But at the same time, we were set up for a big year anyway. Um, yep. we, we brought on some some good size national accounts. And, and, uh, you know, we talk a lot about, man, it's amazing how good things happen when you get up and go to work every day. And, you know, when you're, when you're talking about your product and you, and you believe in your product, good, good things just keep happening. And so, so, you know, if, if we move out of COVID, let's just say COVID ended today, I'm still going to have another good year. So, so it's, it's, it's all good, but yeah, incrediblebags.com. If you need catering bags, pizza delivery bags, we have the best on the planet they are not the cheapest uh they are the best we double stitch everything who knew there were like different levels of velcro right and we only use the highest level grade velcro i didn't know that before i got here I didn't know that. yeah who knew? Yeah, there you go so so no we, we've had a good year man we we have I mean, just some of the absolute best customers on the planet. Um, I, I, you know, I, I went to bed one night last week and I wake up at like two in the morning to my phone, like going off like Christmas because we were in a New York Times article. And we were mentioned and, and they linked a uh, link to our website. And, and I must have had 15 messages from people. Did you see this? And I'm like, and they were all customers. Like, you know, we just we just have the best group of customers and they take pride in their product and they're great people. And I am just incredibly blessed to be where I'm at, man. And and, and I got to tell you, Eric, you are a trend setter, a, a visionary in, in the land of streaming, because for everyone that doesn't realize it, and I know I've mentioned it, I, I talk about this guy that I saw his daily live stream on Instagram where he would interview uh, his customers. And, and I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, look, look at that. The second time I saw it, I thought, oh, maybe I should do something like that. You realize how time, simple and easy it was, right? You're like that. Yeah. And the third time I'm like, I'm definitely doing this. I need to figure it out. Yeah. And then you, you and I sat and played with it. So did you start, um, what I knew you started right around, you know, at the beginning of COVID. Was it when the president said flatten the curve and you said, OK, we need to do something or had you started? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you that how that conversation went. You know, I think the president spoke what on a Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. No, it was on Mon it was on the Monday. All right, it was on a Monday. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was on Monday a year ago. So he spoke on Monday. We talked about it throughout the week because we see all of our customers and our friends struggling all of a sudden with what, what do we do? Right. What do we do? And so Lloyd and I talked about it and I said, let's get some guys lined up. And I think our first guest I think was, 
Anthony Bergala, maybe with Romo's Pizza in up in Glenmont, New York, right outside of Albany. And and we literally called it, you know, what's working. And, you know, we went for about eight, nine months and and just we had guys on talking about you know, what are you doing? What's working for you? What's and I, what the cool thing is, you know, and I'll show this not not to brag, but just to show it. But this is an internet internet advertising competition I wore award that we won the year before for our promotion of hashtag stop the flop. And and we've been nominated again. I just found out for our what's working promotion. Um, so wow. hopefully, you know, maybe we we you know win another one of these. Um, and and I'll tell you, it, it's kind of doing stuff like that. You know, we talk a lot about in sales about you know about giving and bringing value and and you know merit. And bring merit. deliver merit is what I like to say deliver merit, but. But doing that, doing what's working for that whole time, we didn't once talk about, hey, hey, can I get you some perfect crust pizza liners? Hey, do you need some bags? You know, it's 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 about helping. And if we never talked about perfect crust, I was totally fine with that because it was about, hi, Joe, uh, it was about us trying to help the community because the more the more they're successful is the more we're successful just just by default. You know, and so so for us, it was really big. We're, we're big on that. It was and it was always funny. Uh, the owner of our company at one point said, well, why didn't you? I watched the show today. This 30 minute. You guys in one time talk about perfect cross. I'm like, we don't have to. Well, the logos right, you know, right here. There's the you, know, you see our logo. If they're on our page there, they know who we are. We don't need to talk about that. Number one. And number two, I didn't want to because it wasn't about us. It was about us trying to help everyone. And now, you know, all the all the periphery side of that is, you know, people did see us. People did see us trying to help. People did, you know, it, it's one of those Lloyd and I have this conversation and I always feel kind of weird in the way I say it. But we want people I, I want people to perceive we want to help the pizza community. But but then every time I say that, I, I don't want them to perceive that that is what we do. Right. It's so, why. Yeah. So, so we, we want to help the, the pizza community. We want to help them all survive. We want, you know, it was a, it was a pretty cool time because, you know, at three o'clock central every day, we're going live with a different pizza operator Monday through Friday, whether they're uh, Tony Gemignani, who's the goat to somebody that's got one little pizza shop in nowhere, Iowa, and everybody had ideas and everybody, you know, People were all sorts of people were jumping on and you there were there were light bulb moments and there were aha moments. And Jill, Jill, who just commented, uh, Jill is the text uh, queen of, of the United States. And and Jill would jump on. Jill was on our program a couple of times. If somebody needs a text program, she's, she's on Litvak leadership, too. Yeah. Yeah. She's been on Litvak leadership live uh, via text, which was really weird. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, someone like having someone like her on. Someone said, "Why would you have her on your show?" Because she's she's helping. She helped a lot of operators right. during a weird time of how do how do we get to our customers? And uh, you know, when your customers can't get to you, how are you getting to your customers? And and this is the greatest way to do it. I think any operator that's not doing text right now in the restaurant industry, I think it's just big time missing the boat. See, and, and, and that leads us very frankly in, into life harmony. You yeah. know, for, 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 for years, I've heard people talk about work-life balance or work-life in, integration. And, and the other day, I heard someone use the phrase, because I've never liked e either one of those. Are, are you integrating your work and, and, and your life? Is, you know, and, but, but they said life, work-life harmony. It's, it is not even work-life harmony. It's life harmony, the various facets of your life harmonizing together. As a matter of fact, you know who I heard say it, and now it makes sense, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. You know, he, he, he gets it. So because it's, especially now with people working from home and things being different than they were, you know, yeah. it's work and life, it's just all together. And I think you're a good example of that. Um, thank you. Um, I, I was one that kind of started saying work life integration because I think, and I think work, I think life harmony is a better way. It's, it's means the same as work life integration. It just sounds softer, right? It does. Which is, which is great. I, I'm going to steal that as my own. Um, you know, I, look, life is a moving parade. 
you know, and you've got to figure out how, how you can be in the parade, but then you can also at some point stand on the sideline as the parade goes by with your kids and, and how you can support the parade. And, 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 and I, I think, I think, you know, some of the interesting stuff about COVID from the standpoint of like my wife now working from home is how, you know, she was used to maybe that drive home, you know, 30, 40 minute drive home. And what does that look like now? She doesn't get that to kind of decompress a little bit. I've worked from home for so long that I'm just kind of used to it. Um, mm -hmm. Is that your dog barking? No, that's your dog. <laughs> it's one of them. Um, but, you know, from a life harmony standpoint, there's Brian Weevil. Love me some Brian Weevil. Um, is who has also been on the show. Um, is I, you know, I man, I got I'm blessed with just such a, a wonderful wife and great kids and and uh, just a lot of good stuff going on in my life. And man, I just I I said to somebody the other day, I said, man, I live a charmed life. You know, I really do. And I've got I work for some great people that give me a lot of flexibility and and. Uh, you know, so if there are days that I want to get out of here a little early and I want to go do something with my daughter, I, I try to, you know what, I try to take my daughters to school every day and I try to pick them up every day. And I selfishly, I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, my wife said she wanted to do it every day. I'd probably fight her because I just enjoy the time with, with my kiddos in the car and just being, you know, kind of silly and, and, you know, whatever they want to do. And, and so I think life harmony, I, I, I think I, said on a call we were on earlier, you and I, Megamind group, is that I think I'm at a point right now at 51 where I'm more involved probably with my church than I've ever been. I'm more involved with the local community and where our kids go to school than I've ever been. And and it is it any wonder that a lot of other parts of my life, mainly, you know, business and and you know what I got going on spiritually and all that stuff is probably better than it's ever been. I oh, think yeah. I think it's relevant. <laughs> I think there's a reason why, you you know, you, you, you know, uh, Clancy Clark the other day talking about, you know, the secret and talking about, you know, the universe, which I think if you read that book, I think it's God, um, yeah. but, you know, God, God, you know, rewards us, you know, when we give, I think we get it back tenfold. And, and I think it's just doing the little things like getting out on Saturday and, and making a hundred hot dogs for a couple of baseball teams and expecting nothing in return. And, yeah. When you start giving and expecting nothing in return, that's when you start to win. You, you got to give. You got to help people. Got to help people. I'm, I, I mean, I've, I've been telling people all along throughout this, they're, when, when I talk to them professionally, that they're like, well, we got that taken care of. I'm like, okay, well, let me help you. What are, are you doing? And I can tell you how to tighten it up. And yeah. people are shocked. They're like, you're not going to try and sell me anything? I go, no, when you want it, you'll buy it. Yeah, you'll buy it eventually, but yeah. not today. That's okay. Yeah. Let, let me just help you. And and people aren't used to that kind of attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It, it, it is nuts. Okay. So uh, you have some very strong opinions about social media. I do. So post about your family. <laughs> yeah. Talk, two, you know, from, a, from a business standpoint, if, if I own a business, um, if I own a business, my business page, okay, should, sh you know, it's okay to talk about your family on your business page, okay? Let people connect with you. It's so, and so talk about your family first, talk about your customers second, right? Post pictures of your customers that are eating in your restaurant. You know, so here's what happens when we talk about our family first. When we talk about our family, what happens is we connect. Like, I get that. I had a, I had a guy one day who called me and said, and we're friends on Facebook. And he said, he said, dude, how old your daughter? And this was last year. I said, she's eight. He goes, how many LOLs do you have in your house? I'm like, dude, so many. It's stupid. But you probably don't know what that means because you don't have kids that are eight. But we both did. We connected over that. And it just instantly gave us a, 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 some common ground, right? Which is what we all look for when old school, you'd walk into my office and be like, oh, I look. I went to a Red Sox game once and we'd start having a conversation about that. So yeah. you to have common ground in a different way. But talk about, you know, from a, from a business standpoint, talk about your customers. You know, when they're coming in, take pictures of your customers. Post them. If they're eating, you know, at Sean's Pizza, take a picture and say, hey, this is Sean. He's at Sean's Pizza. And you're like this, like, ah, greatest pizza ever. Because what happens is you as the customer are going to go to their page and look for it and you're going to share it. Right? Ding. 
so, so you win, you win in that process and you connect on another level and then talk about your business last. You know, talk about your pizza place last. Be smart about it. You know, po post on social media every day at 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock because at 10 o'clock they're thinking about lunch and 4 o'clock they're thinking about dinner. So, and then from a personal standpoint, if you're Sean Litvak and you own Litvak Pizza, from a personal standpoint, you should, as a per just a, an individual person, you should try to connect with as many people in your community as possible. You can have up yeah. to thousand friends connect to as many pizza pe people connect to as many people as possible and same principles apply talk about your family talk about your customers talk about your business last and you will absolutely win and you know one of the thoughts i've had to add to that a little bit because it's a great example where i live there's where our daughter goes to liberty elementary or liberty school district right and there are two liberty pages out here just for this community Right. One has like twenty four hundred or twenty seven hundred people in it. The other one has like twenty four hundred people in it. And you want to be relevant in your community. If Litvok leadership is in where are you at in Indiana? Sellersburg, just outside of Louisville. Okay. I'll bet you there's a Sellersburg community group on Facebook. Yeah. Right. And if so, if you're an individual business operator, share content post on your page and then share it into that group. And the reason why you share it into that group, not post directly in that group is that way they see it comes from you and you share it into the group. That way they'll either go like your page or they might send you a friend request. So post yep. on your page, share it into the group. But that's, that's such a great way to get to your customers directly is look for community groups that are in your market, that are in your area, and you will win every day. You'll also see what's going on. You know, at the you know, basket baseball season just started as an example. So Brian Weevil's sons both play baseball. If I'm in if I'm in the Sellersburg group and Brian posts, hey, the boys team is gonna play against so and so today, you know, good luck, then maybe your bit maybe you share that. You share that out of the group and say, hey, good luck. You know, we we're rooting for you. And you, you're you behind you. Yeah, you're supporting the community, and 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 don't do it as a as a. Oh, I'm going to share all this stuff to watch my business go up. Do it because you really care about your community. The more success exactly. your community has, the more success your business has. And then finally, yes, attitude and expectation. So, is there anyone still sitting back saying, "I'm waiting for it to get normal before I do something"? Yes. Yes, I have a friend like that. I, I spoke to him last week. He's waiting for things to get back to normal. Yes. They, Who, you'd be surprised. There are a lot more people like that than you think. And they think been, they're getting ready to get back to normal. It's Yeah. Well, and and, and I heard people the other day say, okay, we're going to be, be be normal soon. I'm like, um, we're never going to be normal. No. You know, we used to go to the airport. If you went on an international flight or to an international airport, you would see – you know, Chinese, Japanese, all, you know, with, with face masks on. And we were like, oh. but, but they survived like SARS and a few other things that hit them that didn't necessarily really hit us. And right. so they, they've, they've lived in that space. I, I, I think you'll see part of our uh, population, one, 2% that will probably never go out in public again. Right. Or they won't eat at a restaurant again. Um, right. The, uh, a bigger amount of people than we think. That will probably still wear a mask um, forever, forever, just literally forever. Um, you'll see a large amount of people that will never shop at you know the local grocery store again. They'll pick it up. You'll see a large amount of people that will walk into Walmart and if they don't have the hand sanitizer wipe thing for their cart, they probably won't touch it. I, I, I think that stuff goes on forever, and I, I think, sadly, I think as a society, I think we we've gotten used to some of the the things that made life easy for us. And those things are never going away. I don't think movie theaters will ever come back like they were. We, we, we we're Netflix, we're Amazon prime more than ever before. And, and I think, I think as a society, we've gotten pretty lazy over the last year. And, and, but some of those things are what I said when I first came on, I think, I think COVID pushed us ahead 10 years like that, that because oh, we, yeah adjust we had to adjust to how we get to customers but i do you know you said attitude and expectation and one of the things i wanted to say was you know i try to every morning post something positive and uplifting and and put it on social media and sometimes it's 70 80 percent of the time that's just how i wake up right i don't snooze the alarm i just 
like just get up, right? But there are days when I wake up and I don't feel like that. So, so for me, sometimes it's literally getting on my phone and getting on Google and searching a Bible verse, which I think you do as well. Searching a Bible, yeah. motivational Bible verse, or it's searching a quote, or it's reading something that gets my mind going. And sometimes when I post that, that's to help motivate me, you know, here, here. or some, sometimes it's me. Um, you know, I, I think what you can do this test on Facebook and you can watch it every day, all day long. You could take today and you could post on Facebook first thing in the morning and say, Oh, today's going to suck and watch all the people line up. Oh, you got that right. You know, that's today is going to suck. It's going to be the worst day ever. And then literally the next day you could say, man, I'm blessed to be here today. I can't wait for today and watch all those same people go, Oh, you got that right. You know, it's going to be. Great. <laughs> and, and so, so you, you misery loves company. Mm-hmm. Right? And so if you post misery, well, all your friends are going to jump on that because they're all miserable too. But then you have an opportunity. I, I don't want to – I think there are people out there that do struggle. There, there's Depression is real, and I, and, and I think that it's okay to, to talk about that. I, you know, you mentioned uh, Facebook or social media being people's highlight reels, and, and yep. it's hard. I just, I love it. Yeah, I, you know, but my, my – Reply to that, though, is the term keeping up with the Joneses has been around a lot longer than just the last 15 years that we've had or 13 years we've had Facebook. You know, there was a time when you'd go buy a brand new car and you didn't take the stickers off until you drove it to church on Sunday and everybody saw what you had. <laughs> right. Think about that. So, so we, we were doing that before, but we were doing it on a much smaller scale. And, and you've, you've heard me talk about this before. We all have, you know, the grandmother or the Nana or whatever that had the, had the photo album on the coffee table, on the, on the coffee table. And it's, it's highlights. It's our life. It's, it's, and I, I'm all for posting every great thing that ever happens. Keep, keep the crappy stuff to yourself. Cause, cause frankly, I don't care about it. I, I want to, and, and, and I, and I'm at a point where I'm comfortable enough in my own skin that if you post every day, I got a new Ferrari every day. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I'm not going to be jealous of you. I'm running. No. Race. I'm, I'm going to ask you, race. what are you doing that you're getting a Ferrari every day? I want to understand it. Yeah, we're we're you know what we're running our own race here at our house, and and I'm happy for our friends if they've got good stuff going on, and I want to see it all, and I want to see birthdays, and I want to see new cars, and I want to see kids doing well at sports or debate, and I, I want to see pizzas, and I want to see tacos that you had for dinner, and I want to see you walk in Solomon, and I want to see you know your bald head, and I you know I. I want, I want to see all that. I want to see all the stuff that makes me smile. There's enough negative stuff in this world. And, and, uh, but I don't wake up every day, just like super chipper. Most days I do, but sometimes that's me just, just, you know, yeah. I want to see my dazzled pants on Facebook, man. You know, I mean, finally right. somebody commented. Final questions. Final question is 2021 the year of the NFT. No. You don't think so? No. Do you? I I think it's uh I I, I think I'm I'm gonna defer to Gary V on yeah. that. That I I think it's 24 to 36 months out, but yeah. I think right, right now is when it's gonna be super volatile. Yeah. And do you do something where it's volatile good or volatile bad? I'm steering clear of that. I, I I think there's too much volatility. I think some people are going to lose some money that don't need to be losing money. Oh, I I I don't want to invest. I want to be, become an artist. Well, I okay. Well, that's probably. I, I think you have to be somewhat at this point. You have to be very well known to be an artist that's going to get paid. You know, on some level. So. Uh, you know, people were like, "What's that internet thing?" Did 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 you know when Jeff Bezos? started looking for investors for Amazon. He mm -hmm. approached, he he had to raise a million dollars. He needed 20, $50,000 investors. And he had to talk to 60 people to find 20 to say yes. And what was the first question every one of them asked him? What was it? What is the internet? <laughs> and hey, on that note, I'm, I don't disagree with that. No, we're not done. I don't disagree with that, but, but, and I'm not trying to 
I'm not trying to discount it because he did what he did, but how many other thousands of people? You froze. Either you have frozen or I have frozen. We're waiting. We're waiting. How many thousands of people, Eric? I don't know if it's you or me. Okay, we're going to publicly check the And we're back. Wait, we're back. Okay, how many thousands of people? How many thousands of people still made a boatload of money on Amazon but didn't start right in the very beginning? I think it's okay to get get involved in some stuff, you know, early on. Um, you know, but I think it's okay to get involved in some stuff midway through. So, so it's all good. I I don't know. I don't know. I I'm not a Bitcoin cryptocurrency guy either, so, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just funny. M most people that I've asked about NFT, the, the typical answer, and I knew it wouldn't be your answer, is what is that? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm obviously listening to some people who are cutting edge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, there was uh, um, Rob Gronkowski came out with some some football cards that, you know, are now $86,000. And, it, you know, it's, I don't know, man. Not not my jam. Um I uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little old school now at this point regarding that stuff. But uh, my wife did tell me the other day, you know, you're not your average 51 year old. So I said, OK. But. And then Bruce bought IBM in 1960. When he was two? I, I guess because in 1960, I was not even a glimmer and neither were you. Yeah, no, I was 10 years away. I don't know. I didn't think Bruce, I didn't think Bruce he was that old, but maybe, maybe he yeah. So, so, um, you, yeah, you know, I, I know, I know we're up against it. I know you like to go about 30 minutes and, and we're running way late, but I, uh, I think 2020, I think we're going to look back on it in some respect. I think a lot of people will look back on it fondly and the silver lining will be a very, very large silver lining. It changed us in a lot of good ways. And, um, and, and hopefully we take some of that and we roll into 2021 as you know, we're a quarter of the way through and we roll into 2022 and 2023. I think it's, it's pushed us forward so many years. Um, and I also want to say social media is not the devil. Uh, Use it to your advantage, just like you know Sean is right now uh, by doing a live stream that he never probably would have done a year ago. And uh, I also want to say that I appreciate Litvok Leadership Live. I watch it ev almost every day, and everyone mm -hmm. should. And and Sean, I this sounds cheesy from like you know fifty one year old to a man that's like a hundred years older than me, but I'm proud of you. And watching you do this, you you were just just it was just mastery from the from the first show, and you were great. And it's people look at it and probably like you saw me doing it. You're like, oh, that's easy, and it's not easy. Um, nah. You're very good at it, and I just want to tell you, good job. I'm proud of you, and and I'm excited. I'm excited for the rest of this year, and I think you're going to blow it up and and just keep going because you are Litvak Leadership Live. Litvak Leadership Live, and hey, let and 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 the uh, oh, I'm why am I blanking this? Give yourself a plug, the Penalty Box Live. I was going to. I wasn't there yet. Yep. Penalty Box Live every Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern. Um, no, sorry, 2 o'clock Eastern. I have to get my Central Eastern time. 2 o'clock yeah. Eastern, 1 o'clock Central uh, with Tim Lord and Wesley Vivian Wyatt. Um, I don't know if people know this, but Wes is the president of the Ohio Britney Spears Fan Club. So if anyone knows Britney Spears, please jump yeah. on and help us connect with her. We're working hard on that. Uh, this week we've got on uh, Bill Haston, columnist for the Tulsa World. That's a phenomenal guest, and it's been fun to connect with those people because you get to meet them and understand them and how they think and what can you take away, You know what thing, you know, some of the stuff like we had um, – uh, Adrian Salisbury on with Ecamm Live. And one of the things he said that I'll never forget is your vibe attracts your tribe. You know, yeah. to that thing, if you want to post negative stuff on Facebook, watch all the, the negative Nancy's and the boo birds line up to comment. And if you want to post positive stuff, watch your positive tribe line up for you as well. And so, um, so you hear things like that, that you just, that stick with you forever, you know, and that's some of the cool things about doing this stuff. But, uh, but anyway, that's all, that's all yeah. I got. Hey, thank you for having me on today. The people you meet doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. It is amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, so, cool. Eric, thank you for being on the show today. You were the perfect guest for, for, for this per perfect day that I think will live in uh, infamy and in our, our memory. 
So, May end up being a national holiday one day. What do you think? It wouldn't su surprise me. All right, everyone. That's Litvak Leadership Live. Tune back in tomorrow for... <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Okay, see, and, and it's so difficult. I got to get the hand in the right spot. There we go. This is the Eric Bam. See you later. And...